Hi everybody and welcome back. Now when modeling something from the real world, in our code, you may find that you're adding more and more detail to a class. You'll find that you have a growing list of attributes and methods and that your files are becoming increasingly lengthy. In these situations, you might recognize that part of one class can be written as a separate class. You can break your larger classes into smaller classes that work together. Let's say that we continue adding detail to our Kindle Fire class. We might notice that we're adding many attributes and methods specific to the screen. We could move these attributes and methods to a separate class called screen. Then we can use a screen instance as an attribute in the Kindle Fire class. So let's take a look at how we would do that. Well first we need to create our screen class and we do that just above our class for Kindle Fire. So we do that here, so let's give ourselves some room to work and we say class screen. There we go, colon. And what are the comments for this? Well, or what is the description for this? We'll create a class to model the screen of a Kindle Fire. There we go. Sounds simple. Let's hope so. Next, we call our init method, def underscore underscore init. And what attributes do we have in there? Well, we have self, and then we have screen resolution. There we go. And we're giving this a default value of 1280 by 800. Okay. And let's add in our comment. Initialize the screen's attributes. So as you can guess, you could add in more attributes here if you wanted about the screen. And what attributes will our screen have? Well, self self dot screen resolution equals screen resolution. So we've seen this previously when creating our classes. Now we need a method to describe our screen. And lucky enough, actually, we already have one down here. Describe screen. So let's just copy that, and take that away, and put it in here. There we go. And just while we're here, there's a couple of things we need to do in our Kindle, Kindle Fire class. We need to remove this line, line 55, because we have put that in in line 40. Take that out. And now in our init method, we don't need screen resolution here either because we've put that into its own screen class. There we go. There's those couple of lines removed, or those couple of details removed. And we've added in our describe screen method. Now, let's just remove these blank lines here just to clean it up a little bit. Perfect. Now, how do we call this new class and how do we put it together with our Kindle Fire class? Well, let's go down to the very bottom. And what we need to do in our Kindle Fire class is we need to say self.firescreen equals screen. There we go. And down here now, let's leave our Kindle Fire dot in place and say Fire Screen equals, oh sorry, Fire Screen dot describe screen brackets. Now let's run it and see what we get. Perfect. We have our first line, Kindle Fire, describing our Kindle Fire. And then we have our second line, my HD8 features a widescreen 1280 by 800 HD screen. So let's just run through this a little bit and recap on what we've done. At line 33, we define a new class called screen. This new class doesn't inherit from any other classes. The init method at line 38 here has one parameter, screen resolution, in addition to self. This is an optional parameter that sets the screen's resolution size to 1280 by 800 if no value is provided. The method describe screen has been moved to this class as well, seen here at line 42. There we go. Now, in the Kindle Fire class at line 46, we now have an attribute called self.firescreen. That's at line 55. This line tells Python to create a new instance of screen with a default size of 1280 by 800 because we're not specifying a value. 
and store that instance in the attribute self.firescreen. This will happen every time the init method is called. Any other Kindle Fire instance will now have a screen instance created automatically, which is very handy. Then we create a Kindle Fire and store it in the variable my Kindle Fire. Nothing new there, we've seen that in previous lectures. When we want to describe the screen, we need to work through the screen's attribute. And we do that here. My Kindle Fire dot fire screen dot describe screen. This line tells Python to look at the instance of my Kindle Fire, find its screen attribute, and call the method describe screen that's associated with the screen instance stored in the attribute. Now this looks like a lot of extra work, but now we can describe the screen in as much detail as we want without, cut without cluttering our Kindle Fire class. Some approaches are more efficient than others, but it takes practice and time and patience to find the most efficient representations. As long as your code is doing what you want it to do, then you're on the right track. Thank you for listening, and as always, if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to contact me.